Is China about to head into its first recession in the recent past? So we can see that if you Google China recession, you'll see that China none. So this is for the period of 2006 to 2013. And this was when we were having the great financial crisis. So to my knowledge, China has not had a recession in 30 years. And even during the great financial crisis, their GDP growth just went from 13% to 9%. So that is not recession territory, it's just slower growth. So this is the question I'm going to try and answer in this video by looking through the data points. So this video will include Fantasia Holdings, uh, the ongoing China Evergrande real estate debacle, and so much more. So stick stay tuned. So quick disclaimer, sorry, quick disclaimer, none of this is financial advice, this is purely my own opinion. Please do your own research before making any financial decisions. So do your own research and come to your own conclusions and make your own decisions. Don't blame anybody else for your decisions because at the end, you are going to have to uh, live with the consequences. So Fantasia Holdings defaults, is it a contagion risk? So quickly, uh, I'm just going to say first, so Fantasia Holdings Group, the debt-laden property developer founded by the niece of a former Chinese vice president has been downgraded to default or near default status by the three major credit rating companies after it missed a bond repayment this week. So uh, how much was the bond payment? It failed to repay a 205 million bond payment in principle that it owed on a $500 million senior note that it took out September 2016. There was no grace period for this principle. So what a grace period is, is like uh, for Evergrande. Basically, they have a 30-day grace period that means like if even you miss the payment, you have 30 days to make good on the payment. But this there was no grace payment. So basically, they have defaulted. But I want to look at something more important, which is who is the debt owned uh, owed to because if you if you know that the debt is owed to a certain person then they are the contagion risk so the hong kong listed property management arm of the developer country garden separately said on tuesday that a fantasia control unit failed to repay the principal amount of 108 million dollar bond on monday so you can see that they they also own bonds to this company country garden which i want you to remember the name because this will help us connect the dots so if we take a look at the china's top 10 property developers so you can see that it, there's evergrande the all famous almighty and then there's country garden so i'm familiar with these two companies because they have they are basically the largest companies and the country garden has not really been in the limelight but i believe is uh yeah it's as big their liabilities are almost as big as evergrande's so where where does that lead me to draw my conclusion my conclusion uh not not conclusion my thoughts on this particular segment of the video so prior to prior uh prior to this video i have said that you know, uh, this Evergrande holding is not a contagion risk, but this is because I didn't know who held the bonds because I thought in my mind that most of the bondholders were banks, which I will get into a bit later. So now I have changed my mind and I think that this might be potentially be setting up for contagion risk. So let's get further along the video and we'll come to a conclusion on that later. So incoming credit crunch. So what is a credit crunch? It, uh, a credit card crunch refers to a decline in lending activity by financial institutions that brought on, uh, on by a sudden shortage of funds, basically uh, liquidity drying up. So ever, you can see that why is everyone talking about Evergrande? Chinese firm property firms may face a wave of defaults next year if China Evergrande's group deepening debt crisis shuts access to a key source of funding and conditions don't ease for heavily indebted borrowers. So what is the problem with all the borrowers now? The problem is that they cannot access this liquidity, which is they need new funding to roll over their debt in order for them to make more sales because they use a lot of leverage for them to manufacture and build up all these uh, properties here and there. So what's next? China 
GDP growth primary driver. So we know, all know that GDP growth is how we measure uh, whether a company is doing well, going into recession and all that. And we have to look at, uh, sorry, yeah, it's here. So China's real estate market actually accounts for about 29% of China's GDP. And that's a staggering amount, right? Compared to the US, it's about, US is about 8%, I, I believe 8 or 12%. So you can see that it's nothing compared to the Chinese real estate market. So this, this is actually very dangerous because it leads people to rely heavily on the real estate market. So if there's a boom, then they'll be doing well. And if there's a real estate bust, uh, they will be doing very poorly. And as you can see now, the, the hard times are showing. Uh, they are not doing too well, right? And this heavy reliance also means that when there are hard times, a lot of people will spend a lot less money, not only on this, uh, not only on real estate and all, but generally, generally consumers will cut back on their spending because so much of the workforce is tied into, you know, producing real estate and all that. So next, empty homes in China. And this is where I think it put really puts a nail in the coffin. Uh, sorry. Where's the... Yeah, it's here. There is enough empty property in China to house more than 90 million people. 90 million. Uh, to, according to Rhodium Group's Logan Wright, the entire population of uh, France, basically they are, they are saying that all these countries basically can fit into China. And so I think the, the big problem with this is when you have so much loose inventory, which is that you have 8, 90, million, 90 million houses basically, uh, okay, 90 million available housing for people. And then you have all this Evergrande, uh, Evergrande crisis that they will dump all the real estate onto the market. I think it's going to lead to the whole real estate market being very depressed for the next four or five years to clear this basically this is a supply glut uh and basically what a supply glut is is that there's way too much supply and we can see that this happened actually very similar thing happened let me see if i can find it actually uh spain supply glut real estate 2000. So, okay, you can see that according to Wikipedia, there was a Spanish property bubble, right? Uh, yeah, here. 2000, 1996 to 2008. And this is basically, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I, I have a brief overview of what it is. And basically what it was is that everyone was making so much money. Everyone during the leading up to the great financial crisis was saying real estate is the best investment. And everyone wanted a second home in Spain. And basically, even currently, the price is about half. Uh, again, don't quote me on this, but I remember that the price was halved at one point. Uh, basically, because there was too much supply. And I see the same ha thing happening uh, with with this China, China uh, housing issue. Because they have too much uh, supply, they, it might take them a very long time to... to clear all this supply and the prices have to drop in order to increase demand from the consumers. So basically what I'm, I'm essentially saying is I think the real estate market in China is basically going to tank and it will take a lot of time for consumer confidence to come back for people to, to basically buy up all the homes and, and basically everyone is using the houses instead of just buying and playing a hot potato game and hopefully the next person buys it from me for more money, right? So in my opinion, China uh, will overtake the US in GDP, but it won't be as fast as projections. But before that, I uh, I need you to do me a big favor and smash up the thumbs button, right? But okay, after smashing up the thumbs button, I think it's important to look at the liquidity support. So initially, uh, this goes back to why I said I didn't think that it was a contagion risk. Initially, I thought all the banks were holding, basically was holding the bag, right? But now I realize that actually there's a lot of cross-section risk between all this, all this, uh, all this real estate developers. So basically, they are sorry for the foul word, but they are incestual. It, it's their connection is probably incestuous, right? 
and they have so much assets of each other and basically it's all propped up it's like a house of cards and now currently we are seeing the house of cards collapse and initially i thought because you know the the chinese bank basically they are they, they won't directly bail out evergrande but they will stop it from hitting the broad system by basically keeping the state-owned bank well capitalized so that the state-owned banks won't default on their obligations but currently it seems that a lot of the debt is owned by the private real estate developers and all this which china will let default and this this will basically send a domino effect uh, raining down the system that's my opinion but next, China will overtake US to become the world's largest economy by 2028, five years earlier than anticipated than a previously uh, than earlier than previously forecast. But uh, we, if we look at the graph, basically they think that China is going to have a, a linear way up like that. And in my opinion, this is uh, completely wrong. I don't know how the projections will look, but I think they won't be crossing by 20. 28 and I think they might even take maybe 10 years more than that and the reason I say that is because all these economists they always project on a very linear scale and you can see when you have something like uh, this whole housing crisis that you know your real estate sector is basically going to tank and that that was the main driver for China's China's growth for the past 20 years I think is is setting up for a perfect storm of China to not overtake uh, US so fast because they have to transition into uh, more of a service-based economy because they you can't just keep producing real estate that no one needs and just add it on your GDP balance sheet which which is what China actually has been doing for the past uh, basically 20 years to prop up their growth to to encourage investment into their country and all so all this said my conclusion is contrary to my prior judgment i now think that that i now think that the china real estate crisis will have systemic risk previously i thought it wouldn't have systemic risk but now i changed my mind because there are new facts coming to light so uh that's that's a very important point right don't think i'm flip-flopping i'm looking at new data and i'm coming up with a new decision there is no point to stick with an old decision when you have new data that's that's what fools do so there are many signs shaping that it shaping it up to look like the this real estate debacle will lead to a recession which i firmly now i quite firmly believe that china will head into its first recession in the past 30 years so china will overtake us as the world's largest economy so don't say i'm bearish on china i'm definitely very bullish on china in the long term but i think that all this fake propping up of using real estate to grow their their gdp will will certainly hurt them uh basically if in another term the chicken has come home to roost but not as soon as linear projections indicate why because again look at the linear projections the linear projections will always say that you know uh growth 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 but basically up to this point even somewhere here it, it would have been all the real estate market propping it up so now i think they have to uh ch change more into a uh, selling buying and selling goods and services instead of heavily relying on all this real estate sector to prop up their economy so this is just my opinion i i might be wrong i might be uh you know crazy or or something to bet against not not to really bet against i'm not shorting china don't worry but basically i i'm not as bullish on china as i used to be now that the new facts are coming to light so that's all i want about all i wanted to share today thank you very much for watching till the very end of the video if you did enjoy the video smash up the thumbs up button smash the subscribe button and press on the bell notification and press all and do leave me a constructive uh comment right any criti uh, constructive criticism or any positive feedback will be much appreciated. And with that being said, thank you very much again for watching till the very end of the video. Have a fantastic day ahead and peace out.